in the times that we are living nowadays and just watching what we are witnessing on a daily basis on social media and so forth, of course, many people at this particular time, we begin to, no matter how many times we hear the Qur'an, we hear the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, shaitan is always there with all of us. And he begins to plant the seeds of doubt within the minds of the Muslim. That when is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to come? You are a Muslim. You believe in Allah. Allah is the one who is Allahu ala kulli shay'in qadeer. Allah can do whatever He wants. But yet, when will the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come? And what we have to realize is that we always go back to the Qur'an and we study the Qur'an and we find stories in the Qur'an. And there are incidents in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he alayhi sallam went through himself. And you must think about this, that if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the Prophet of Allah and he has the best supporting caste, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they are there supporting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he begins to go through a situation which I'm going to explain right now. The reason why he alayhi islam went through this is so that it can serve as a lesson for you and I. That you and I, when we find ourselves in this particular situation, what should we do? What do we learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? First of all, brothers and sisters, the incident I'm referring to and the surah that today I want to just share with you a few verses of the Qur'an from is Surah Al-Ahzab. The word Ahzab is the plural of the word Hizb. And Hizb is a, a word that is used for the, or it is used in uh, the translation of the word Hizb is group. So when you have a bunch of groups coming together for a certain cause, it is called hence Ahzab. And the idea and what happened was in the fifth year after Hijrah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's in Medina, and one of, the tri one of the tribes or one of the Jewish communities who were expelled from Medina was the tribe of Badu Nadir. They went, they had violated the terms of their agreement, with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hence Rasulullah sallam, he told them to leave Medina. They were settled in Khaybar. They, the leader of that tribe, whose name was Huyay bin Akhtab, he came to Mecca and he began to excite the Quraysh. He began to say things in favor of them. And he began to say things, even though he's a Jewish man, he's telling the people of Mecca, the, uh, the idol worshippers of Mecca, the pagans of Mecca, the mushrikeen of Mecca, that I support your religion. I value your religion. Even though we know that Judaism, at least, the Jewish people, they had received the Torah. These are idol worshippers. We know that there's a difference in their religion. But when it came to going against the Muslims, they all came together. Hence, it's called Ahzab. And the reason why I'm talking about this surah today is because we see the same exact thing happening nowadays. People are coming from different religions. Different ethnicities, different backgrounds. Why? A one cause, and that is to go against Muslims. And we're seeing this today. What we're seeing today is a sort of an Ahzab kind of situation taking place. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he finds out. And not only that, but then you had one more Jewish tribe living in Medina. Their name was Banu Quraiza. They were also under this agreement that they have to support Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They had an agreement with the Muslims that if you go to battle, we will fight along your side. And they, the Muslims, told the Jewish community, Banu Quraiza, that if you go to war, we will fight alongside with you. Because this was the agreement. But then now you have Banu Nadir, the leader of Banu Nadir, who comes all the way to the leader of Banu Quraiza. And he begins to talk to him. And not only that, so now he has the Quraysh with him. He's already talked to the Ghatfan tribe and he has got their support. And once again, they all are coming against Rasulullah and they all are coming against the Muslims. And then he convinces Banu Quraiza. And Banu, the leader of Banu Quraiza, Ka'ab, he agrees with Huyay bin Akhtab and he says that no matter I have an agreement with Rasulullah, I will break my agreement, I'll violate the terms of my agreement, and I will fight, I will fight alongside with you. When he told his own leaders, when he told his own people that this is what I have done, they all told him that you had a pact with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How dare you break that pact? But once again, we're talking about, we're talking about betrayal. And the fact that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also suffered and he was a victim of betrayal. Here, these people are betraying the agreement with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanAllah,
subhanAllah, today, as the ummah today, we are also suffering from betrayal. One is that a person who says, I'm not in favor, and they go and they, they bomb these innocent civilians, and they bomb their homes and so forth. One is we know what their agenda is, we know what they want to do, but wallahi, in these particular times, the betrayal has come from the Muslim countries. The betrayal is that they are silent while their own Muslim brethren are going through this particular situation. So once again, we always go back to the Quran. Rasulullah was also betrayed during his time. Just like today, Muslims are being betrayed. No matter how all these, all these countries, wallahi, these are all empty threats that they are giving. We will do this, we will do that. We side with the Muslims. These are all, wallahi, just petty words. There is no action that takes place. There is nothing that they're doing. There is no Muslim country that is standing by the side of our brothers and sisters today in Palestine. And then on top of this, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam think think about that betrayal see one is you know what's coming from the front but what is going on behind and when someone backstabs you this actually breaks your confidence this actually hurts really bad so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's sitting in medina he's asking the sahaba what do we do in this kind of situation you have the you have banu nadir you have all these people and how many people are, are the muslims they're only 3000 in number who are they facing almost 12000 in number the, the of course of course, the amount is just so outrageous. How many people are coming against the Muslims? So the Prophet ﷺ said, what do we do in this kind of situation? Salman al-Farsi said, let's build a trench around Medina. And they began to build a trench. So the very first thing that we learn from all this whole story, brothers and sisters, that what Rasulullah he went through during that time, it was through Allah's wisdom that he went through that time so that today when you and I are going through this particular same situation, we can learn from the life of the Prophet wasallam. And Muslims will go through this. But in that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he even talked about the instability of the Muslims. He says, إِذْ جَاءُكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ Remember the time when they came from above you. Meaning that you had the people who are coming from the front. وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ The backstabbers. بَنُوْ قُرَيْضَ They were coming also behind you. وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَإِذْ الْأَبَصَارِ So they're coming from the front, they're coming from the back. وَإِذْ الْأَبَصَارِ You know when you see something that is shocking, it, sh it, op it makes you open up your eyes. Allah says your eyes and your eyesight shifted. And your hearts reached all the way to the throats. Meaning that you cannot digest what you're watching. Just like today, we cannot digest what we're watching. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, At that time, there are people, their iman began to shake. At that time, there was an ibtila that came upon the believers. The believers were tested. Zulzilu zilzalan shadida, and they were shaken to their core. Not just a general shake. Allah says shadida, severely shaken. They were severely shaken. But at that time, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa id yaqul al munafiqun wal ladin fi qulubihim maradum ma wa'adan Allah wa Rasuluhu illa ghurura." So first thing we learn is, brothers and sisters. Our Sahaba radiallahu anhum, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they went through a trial also. They went through a time when they, were when they were severely shaken to their core, but they never lost their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because you go back to the beginning of the surah. Go back to the beginning of the surah. Three instructions that Allah has given. When you find yourself in this situation, what do you do? Ya ayyuhan nabi, ittaqillah, wa la tut'il kafirina wal munafiqeen. Always show, always be aware of Allah. Apply taqwa in your life. Then number two is, Ya nabi, ittaqillah, wa tut'il kafirina wal munafiqeen. وَاتَّبِعْ مَا يُوحَى إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ And you follow the Qur'an. Follow what has been revealed to you. Through, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through the practical demonstrations of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And number three is put your tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We at this particular time, I get it. There are times who people have come to me. They've got upset with me after giving a khatira and they're saying, we just talk, talk, talk. What more can we do? But I ask the same brother, what more can we do at this particular time? Yes, people are going for demonstrations. People are going for protests. They're speaking out loud on social media. And right now the world is is fighting out. There has never been a time 
more than today right now that we are seeing that now people are starting to see the truth now people are starting to see the truth that what is truly going on and but at this same time when the whole there's a force against the muslims there are people in media there are people in politics influential people people in our society who all are supporting the the oppressors and they are spreading the, they are supporting the volley moon at that particular time there are muslims that they're going to begin to say what's going on at that time you're going to have some people who are going to say what happened I was a believer in Allah. Where is Allah's help? And that is where they began to lose some trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, we are going through a fitna. A fitna means that you go through a trial. And this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people who are going to lose their faith in this way. And there are some people who are going to remain steadfast. And they're going to become even more firm uh, through this trial and through this fitna. So we are, though we are going through this fitna, we have to remain firm. And it is the munafiqun, those who have a sickness in their heart, they're going to fall in this trial. They're going to fall in this fitna. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that here the Prophet ﷺ, while he was digging up the trench, while he was digging up the trench, they came across a huge boulder. The Prophet they brought Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when he struck that rock, when he struck that rock, there was like a blaze that came out of that rock. And at that time, Rasulullah he said that Jibreel has shown me the palaces of these other kings and how the Muslims will conquer these lands. And subhanAllah, think about this. At that time, you have the munafiqoon, the hypocrites, those Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ There's a sickness in their heart. Allah says that they began to make a mockery of the Muslims. وَإِذْ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ مَا وَعَدَنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا This is just a deception. Because here they're saying that you're talking about digging up a trench. You're talking about protecting yourself. We can't go anywhere, so we're digging this trench to protect ourselves. We have nowhere to go. And you're talking about going and conquering those lands? This is just ludicrous. It doesn't even make any sense. So they began to say, your promises, the promises from Allah, the promises from Rasulullah they're all nothing but a deception. This is what they began to say, the munafiqoon. Now you think about it, in this day and age, yes, there are so many people, wallahi, watching what they watch on a daily basis, seeing what they see on a daily basis, hear what they hear on a daily basis, and now they are being sh we are being shaken to our core. And there are many people, wallahi, today, who believe in this garbage what they hear outside. There is, you know, over the weekend, someone sent me a video. You have these people who don't even know anything about Islam. And they, you know, you see videos now, they are corrupting the minds of others. Telling people, teaching people that this is who Rasulullah was. He was a warmonger. There was a lady in, from American politics. She was saying that Rasulullah left Mecca because he could not get his way in Mecca. And then she began to say these absurdity things. So absurd. So dumb, honestly. She began to say that Rasulullah came to Medina... And he was, and he began to take, Islam began to take ideas from the Old Testament. She's saying these kind of things. And then she said that when the Jewish people did not comply with the Muslims, then Rasulullah began to go after their life. When our children, when our youth, when our men and women, when they begin to hear these kind of absurd things in media, and they begin to paint Islam in a negative light, that is when people are going to start losing their faith. That is where people who have a little sickness in their heart, shaitan is going to use that. Shaitan is going to invest into that sickness and he's going to magnify that sickness and he's going to say, where is Allah? How long are we going to go through this? You are a believer. We've been making qunut nazila. We've been making dua. You've been fasting. You've been doing this. Where is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the same Surah Al-Ahzab, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, the ayah is not coming to mind, but the ayah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a promise, 
and the believers, they believed in the promise of Allah and the promise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So as Muslims, during this particular time, during these challenging times, number one is, let's remember that, it, that we're not the only ones who went through this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also went through this. And during that time, he remained steadfast. Allah. You have to put your trust in Allah. You have to believe that Allah has a plan. And yes, that plan may take time for it to come into fruition. But we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and during these times if our iman is shaken and we begin to have doubts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to remove these doubts and have our full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and finally I will say this you study Islamic history study every single major surah in the Quran you say the life of Rasulullah you say the life of Musa alayhi salam and so forth and many others you will learn that first the Muslims had to go through some difficulty. The Muslims had to go through some difficulty. And there were people who lost their life. Wallahi, today the Quran says, when he talks about the shuhada, Allah says, Bal They're not dead, they are alive. These children who lost their life, they are subhanAllah, they are in the company of our forefather Ibrahim alayhi salam. They are right now with Ibrahim alayhi salam, enjoying Jannah, enjoying the company of Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is what we learn when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he went to al isra wa Maraj, when he met Ibrahim alayhi salam, he is at Baytul Ma'mur and he has all these children. These children, yes, they lost their lives. We, Quran says, بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ They're getting such a beautiful sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But remember brothers and sisters, this is the nature of how his is there is a t difficult time but the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wallahi you can go and see all this garbage that is being spread on social media that this is what the prophecy is this is what the prophecy is there's only one prophecy that will come to tr that will come into fruition and that is the prophecy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam no matter what wallahi we see the entire dunya going in this direction and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that this is what's going to happen we believe 1000% unequivocally in the fact that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever comes from his mouth, it is the absolute truth. And it will happen whether we agree with it or not, whether we agree with how it's going to happen or not, but it's going to happen because why? Because what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and not only that, but the Quran says, وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْحَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٍ يُوحَىٰ He only speaks through wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, the Prophet alayhi wa went through this. Number two is, at these particular times, do not lose your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a sign of nifaq and so forth. And number three, always remember that history tells us there will be some difficulty, but the fat and the nusra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come most certainly. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve our iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters in Al-Quds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate their miseries. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our upcoming generations. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. Wa jazakumullah khair. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما